I saw this on eBay and I I was intrigued by it. I must say that I don't have any use for it whatsoever, but it wasn't a lot of money. In fact, it was um, just over eight US dollars and just under 12 New Zealand dollars. So not a lot of money. But as it stands, as a standalone board, it's useless. You will need a transformer and a 12 volt supply. What actually is it? Well, it's an inverter. 12 volts comes in here and this is the output to the transformer. And you connect the transformer effectively backwards, i.e. you have 12, naught, 12 here, and the other side of the transformer, which would normally be the primary, becomes the secondary. And effectively, you get 220-ish volts out of here. It's claimed to give you 300 watts. Now, I don't know whether that's consumed from 12 volts I would imagine that's the case now the actual power you get will will be based on two things the transformer and the ability to dissipate heat on these relatively small heat sinks when you consider that the current going into the transformer is effectively fed into the secondary this transformer is a relatively small one and is, I think I've written on it somewhere, it's 30 watts. If the secondary, this is confusing, isn't it? Which is now the primary, is only, say, a one amp rating, that really means you could only induce one amp into the transformer. But it depends really on what you want to use. The uh, secondary four. 220 volts output with this particular transformer that voltage will depend on 12 volts going in to get 220 out we'll test this in a minute see if it works now bearing in mind this is being fed from a modified square wave we'll again we'll have a look in a minute and see what the waveform looks like it's not going to be useful for anything that's going to be exactly frequency dependent i.e say electric clock can't think why you'd want to power one but you could but a rather useful function of this which prompted me to make this video if you are a valve person normally the transformers are rather expensive if you want to get say two or three hundred volts on the um, to suit the anode of the valve or something like that particularly if you're just talking about a preamp you could use this arrangement to power it because the preamps only going to consume five or six milliamps be it at two or three hundred volts so let's have a close look at it the driver chip which I would suspect is genuine is made by international rectifier and it's an IR 2153 which is a self oscillating half bridge driver the switching devices are power MOSFETs n channel to be precise and they have an unbelievable rating of 75 volts 80 amps I don't know whether that's a tad optimistic I don't know but the number is P75 N F 75 there's very little else in it a few diodes resistors and a few capacitors I still have no idea what that relay does and why it's necessary particularly as it's probably quite a major part of the costs of this board this is the rear side of the board and you can see that the traces are adequately thick for the required power consumption and quite nicely made and relatively well soldered. 
Right, I have the voltage set to 12 volts on the power supply, so we'll throw the switch. The relay on the little board has come in, and you can see here 12 volt supply, and this is the current open circuit, if you like. In other words, the transformer's connected, but there's no load on it, so it's consuming 2.64 watts or 220 milliamps. Well, obviously the circuit's working because we have the obligatory LED lit up, so all's well. This is the output and it's 211 volts AC at a frequency as yet undetermined. This is the waveform. This is actually on the input to the transformer. In other words, the 12 volt side, simply because I don't think my scope will be very happy with 200 odd volts going into it. But the waveform should be pretty similar. It might be a little bit rounder. But one thing it's not is 50 or 60 hertz. Now with the potentiometer on it wound right down, that is the waveform and the frequency that it's running at, which is about 91 hertz. Now if you'll notice, well, let, let's do it. I'll um, crank up the pot and we'll see where we go. You can see the frequency is clearly going up. And we're now at 200 odd hertz and at the extreme end of the pot. It's a multi-turn pot, so it's going to take me a while. Four hundred hertz, give or take. Now, clearly, you couldn't use this with anything that is very sensitive to frequency. But if you were looking to, um, as I mentioned earlier, to feed this into a valve, You'd obviously have to rectify and smooth it, of course, but um, you could do that. Um, I can't think of instantly any other applications that this would be useful for. We'll connect a load to it now and see what happens. Now it'll be interesting to see if this will power this. This is a Philips LED and is the 12 watt rating, 12 watt rating, I should say. Whether it's going to be happy with um, 200 odd hertz at square waves i don't know we we will find this out in a few seconds so i'll just connect the secondary to it and see if it lights up or goes bang or both right i've connected the transformer to the led and let's see what happens well it clearly lights up and it hasn't gone bang. We're drawing 1.4 amps from the 12 volt supply, which is just over 16 watts. Well, our voltage from the transformer has dropped to 150 volts. Now that's probably because of the transformer itself. It's limited by the fact that the, the secondary, now the primary, is only a low wattage and um, that's where I think the voltage drops coming to but uh, it, it does work and yeah surprising if anyone knows what the purpose of the relay is on that circuit drop a note on the comments much appreciated